Hello, my dear investors. In this short video, I'll explain why I create my own spreadsheet. But first, let me just show you quickly how my spreadsheet looks like. So over here, I put inside a ticker and I fill up all the information from the company's 10K. So I'll put in the revenue numbers. I'll start by 2002, which is 20 years ago. And then I'll skip to 10 years to 2012 and I'll fill in 2013 and t and until the last the year. I'll fill in all the information, the revenue, cost of revenue. I'll, I'll explain in the next videos all the things I put inside. Uh, each one I'll explain differently. But the first question is, why do I do my own spreadsheets? Why I don't just go to a website and just copy all the numbers with, that they have over there? What's the necessity to do your own research and fill in everything by yourself? So let me give you an example why I do all this work. It could take sometimes a few hours. Usually it will be like a minimum of three hours to fill in the spreadsheet. And this is just my first part of my research. So let me give you a, a short example why I do this. Here we have uh, the 10K from... Thor Industries. Now, Thor Industries is the biggest company in the world that creates the creates RVs. And this is the official 10K. Now, let me show you the numbers in, in a website. So here we have MSN Money. And in 2021, they they the net profit, 659 million. 2020, 222 million. 2019, 133 million. We'll go here to QuickFS, the same exact thing. 2021, 660, 223, 133. Now, if I would have just copied this information, I wouldn't know anything to be smarter. But when you go to the actual companies, um, the, 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 the raw numbers, we'll see a different picture. So here we have uh, the 10K from until 2018. So we see here the net revenue, the net income, Everything is usual, 256, 374, 430. You have the basic, the diluted income, earnings per share. Everything is usual. Then it goes on to the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the statements. But in, after, from 2019, uh, something was added on. Now we see here, this is the official net income. 133, 222, everything is in millions, 659. These are the numbers that MSN and QuickFS put inside. You see, 659, they put inside, 2021, 660. MSN, they put in 659. The year before, 222. Over here, 222. But from 2019, Thor Industries added on comprehensive income and over here there's a, a massive change now and over here we have 2019 2020 2021 so 2019 was 133 million but the net income after the comprehensive income was slashed almost half to 76 million the official number in 2020 is 222 afterwards it's 306 that's a difference of 80 million dollars 659 so over here is a smaller difference 67677 that's a small amount of money what changed since 2019 so <clears throat> for industries they bought uh, a german company called um erwin heimer group now the erwin heimer group is a german company it's one of the, i think it's one of the biggest companies that creates rvs in europe and Thor Industries bought, bought the company in 2019. You can see this in the annual report. Uh, fiscal 2019, Erwin Hyman Group acquisition. On February 1, 2019, the company acquired Erwin Hyman Group. Okay, so now we understand what changed in 2019. All of a sudden, Thor Industries starts putting inside the 10K all these different comprehensive incomes. Now... If we wouldn't know better and we just copy the numbers for MSN or from QuickFS, we wouldn't know anything about this. But when we look at the numbers from the 10K itself, we always make a big understanding what changed so much.
big dealer group. So that, that is that is a strength uh, from our combined company. So yeah, and then for Thor, it wasn't just another acquisition. This we we call more of a merger because you have the the largest and strongest dealer network and uh, product group in Europe. So for us, it was our largest acquisition ever. Thor Industries himself, the CEO himself, said this is more of a merger than acquisition. And now, if you go to Erman Heimen Group, you can find something very interesting, which is they have 30 locations in Europe and 6 locations in the UK and another location in China. So, basically, Thor Industries, up to 2019, was uh, only in the US. All the income was in dollars. And from 2019, they, they expanded so much and... Now everything is becoming international. The Erwin Heimig Group is bringing in money for in euros, in pounds, in yuans, and even more than that. You go over here and see that the Erwin Heimig, Heimig Group has a has a, a rental uh, department. We, they don't sell; they also rent out. And these and this this department uh, rents out all over the world, uh, as it says over here. They rent companies with stations all over Europe, New Zealand, and Japan. So basically, in 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 one in one day, Thor Industries turned from a company owning on, on earning only in dollars. Now they're earning in dollars and euros and pounds and all these different currencies. So, if you want to know anything better for just reading from just copying the numbers for MSN, we 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 would wouldn't know anything. But over here, this is major major differences. So from 2019, 133, they lost. On foreign cur currency trans uh, translation, they lost in 2019 47 million dollars, and in 2020 they gained 92 million dollars. Now this isn't a small amount. 92 million out of 220—that's almost 50 percent. And 47 million—that's uh, a huge amount of money. And this isn't a, like a one-time thing. The company totally changed its structure. It's from from, an, from a U.S. company, it turned into international company. So we can't just look only at these numbers, and not taking into consideration the comprehensive income. So that's why I don't copy from any from any website. I do all the research myself. I want to see the numbers. I want to get the right judgment. Should I put in the comprehensive income? Is it a one-time thing or is it something fundamentally in the company and I have to put inside and take it into consideration? The second reason I, I, I do my own numbers is when you look at the numbers and you're reading the annual reports and you're starting to copy it and paste it inside the spreadsheet, you, you see the company, like in front of your face, growing and changing and evolving. Because you see, you put in the number and you see there's a, there's a up of 10%. And all of a sudden you see, wait, wait, why did this happen? And why did the debt grow? And so you actually, you're not just copying in the numbers and that's it. You, you, you're you living for two hours or three hours, however long as it takes. You're riding along for the, 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 the ride of the last 10 years of the company. You see all the changes and, and it's very fascinating. So... Let's say I put inside the revenue, the income, and I, and then I put inside the cost of revenue, and I realize the revenue went up ten percent, and the cost of revenue went up eleven percent. I say, okay, so the cost of revenue went up more than the revenue, or so why is that happening? And if I could see consistently that the cost of revenue is going higher in percentage more than the revenue, you, you realize these small things only when you're copying and pasting and doing it yourself, and not just going into a website and copying all the numbers at one time. So that's the re main reason I do, I do everything myself. So this is for the first video for today. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it.